Hey, what's up? My name is Wix. Welcome back to the channel. First of all, Happy New Year's to everybody. For those of you who are still following this build, thank you very much. Um, and let's get right into it. Um, in this episode, we're going to be talking about what happened with this car when we took it down for a tune. So today is the 5th of Jan, 2023. Uh, this car was booked in in December last month uh, to go down to the dyno and get a tune. Um, so I went to go take some footage and um, it wasn't worth taking any footage. So um, I had a bad outcome on the dyno. Uh, the car is still safe, still works properly, um, but we weren't able to tune it that day. So what happened is we got the car off the trailer, got it onto the hub dynos and uh, Dave down at DTEC here in Tauranga. Uh, amazing man when it comes to tuning, especially with the Link ECUs. Um, discovered quite quickly that the car is not quite ready to tune. So we took it off the dyno, back onto the trailer. He gave me a couple of things to sort out before I go back. We are currently booked in this month. I think it's January 24th. With, we're booked in again to give this, give this another go at getting a tune. Um, now the issues were, one, I had an oil leak out of the passenger head on the on the ground um, and the other issue were the rear cam sensors on these version 7 STI heads so when you're running version 7 STI heads with VVT um, you've got the rear cam sensors that monitor the camshafts and I've got some lobes on them to tell them where the camshaft position is um, now because my car is not a version 7 I've had to install that as an extra um, and yeah so there's two cam sensors one on each side now one wasn't working at all and the other one uh, if you know what an oscilloscope is or the scope for a normal trigger you get these waves uh, the waves are meant to go up and mine were pointing down which sort of told us that the wires were around the wrong way um, so at the moment I've only got a two wire cam sensor on each side uh, so it just meant I needed to swap those wires around. Um, and because of that, he asked me a whole bunch of other questions about the engine, which I wasn't able to answer, because uh, a lot of it is beyond me. Um, so we made a call to Speed Factor here in Tauranga, who put the engine together, um, and they were able to answer a few questions anyway. But regardless of that, we weren't able to complete the tune, or do any tuning, um, until I sort those issues out. So today where I'm up to today I have sorted the oil leak um, and it ended up being just a not sure what it was but it was leaking out the, the rocket cover gasket or seal um, so I ended up ordering a new seal put some gunk on it slapped the cover back on um, no more oil leak so that's one win um, the second win the second one was um, sorting out the rear cam sensors um, I've reversed the wires on the side, which was the driver's side on this side. Reversed the wires, so that one's all good. Um, and on the other side, what had happened was my loom that I had made, um, I had made it so the plug was on the loom, but what I didn't account for was the weight of. Um, I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of hoses, um, and what had happened was the weight of the hoses went onto the loom and it kind of pulled pulled the wires out of the plug so it wasn't going at all. Um, so I've sorted that out, I've just extended the wires a little bit so it's got a little bit of slack um, and now the cam sensors um, should be going. However, today I've had, um, so sorry, before, before that, go back to the tune. So no tune this time, had some issues, I've sorted the issues. Um, however, I've still got one issue that's out of one out of one of those issues which is the rear cam sensors I'm still having some issues with it so I've had Selwyn over today uh, to try and make sure that everything's wired properly um, and we're just getting some really weird um, readings on, off the ECU pro or the software or the laptop um, we're pretty sure we've got them wired up correctly but we, we're still having a few issues 
um, we get a green light when it sinks and then a red light when it doesn't sink and they keep switching backwards and forth. Um, we tried reversing the wires again, that didn't really work, so we put them back to how they work um, and that's where we've left it. So, Salwin's made a phone call to Dave at DTEC um, and he's brought up a good point which I'd like to talk to you about. Um, now this, this kind of is for anybody who's thinking about putting a, first of all, version 7 heads on an earlier model, like a GC8, um, and also wanting to run the VVT stuff. This message is important for you, especially if you're ordering parts from either Japan or the US. So the camshafts that I've got in my heads are the Brian Crower Stage 3 AVCS camshafts. Well, yes, let me explain. Um, cut a long story short, I had a whole heap of footage that I had already recorded, but as, as I was watching and putting the video together, I realized how wrong I was with the information that I was sharing with you. So I've, I'm having to do a new video to set the story straight. So basically, I thought I had a certain type of camshaft, what you just heard me mention, BC0632, which is the EJ207 stage 3 single AVCS camshaft but that's not what was in my engine I thought it was but it wasn't what I had in my engine was uh, the BC0623 camshaft which is an EJ257 stage 2 dual AVCS camshaft um, that's what I had in my engine I don't know how I made the mistake. I had to track through my old invoices um, just to make sure I had the right camshaft. Um, and it turns out that no, I, I actually ordered the wrong camshaft. Um, it was kind of half my fault, half Brian Crow's fault. Um, but in the end, uh, I guess I'm the one who said yes at the end of the day. So I got the wrong camshaft. Was hoping that Speed Factor would have picked it up when they put it in the engine. but. I don't think they realized either um, and that's why <coughs> um, these camshafts they don't have the paddles which works with my two wire sensor which is pretty much just the magnet um, it doesn't have paddles it has little indents and as I'm talking I'll hopefully I'll play some um, some footage of uh, my old footage that shows what those camshafts look like but on those certain intakes um, they don't have a protruding lobe uh, or paddle. Um, they've got a little kind of like a half moon or crescent indent that goes in inside the camshaft. And that's why they weren't working with my sensors. So there, there was two options that I could have done. One of them was I'd have to swap the camshaft and put the proper ones in. Um, or the other one is to make those other camshafts work. I'd need to change the sensor to what they call a Hall Effect sensor, which is a three wire sensor and all we're adding in there. So my two wire ones have a signal and they have a ground. Um, the three wires have both of those plus a power uh, and I'm pretty sure it's a 12 volt feed. Um, so I would have had to have done that. I did do that, attempt to do that. I went and got some second hand Hall Effect sensors. I did a couple of testing with the 12 volt, but I, I couldn't get it to pick it up on the computer. Um, maybe the sensors were faulty, I'm, I'm not too sure. Um, and as you, if you've been following me on this journey, you know I've had a real nightmare of wiring, so I chose not to do it that way. I chose to do it maybe the more expensive way, and that's just fork out for a whole new set of Brian Crower camshafts. Um, I had already bought the old ones brand new and now I'm having to buy a second set brand new um, So basically that's why I was having issues with my rear cam sensors because I had the wrong camshafts in my engine so a bit of a uh, Through my mistake hopefully, hopefully that's a lesson to everybody out there watching who may be thinking about doing doing extra stuff that your car doesn't come with so this car didn't come with AVCS or VVT but I'm adding it in um, 
and I'm not just doing factory stuff, I'm doing aftermarket stuff, so um, a lot of it I did on my own, just my own research, which nothing wrong with that, um, but obviously there is if you're not getting or buying the right thing. Um, so it was a very expensive lesson for me, um, but that's but that's that's pretty much it. So I think I had about another uh, half an hour's footage of me before talking about all the stuff that just had nothing to do with the actual issue. The actual issue is I had the wrong camshafts, but now I bought the raw, right camshafts. Um, the good thing was I was able to sell those camshafts to someone in Wellington here in New Zealand um, who said it would suit his build. Um, I wasn't able to sell them for nowhere near is what I bought them for, but um, still got some good money for them anyway. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty lucky about that that I didn't have to fork out totally for a brand new set. So I think I'll just count my lucky stars on that one. Um, but that was it basically. So it means that now, um, as you can probably tell, I've had to pull the engine out of the car. So I've got the engine sitting next to me. Um, I've had to strip it right back. Take all the timing gear off, um, take the uh, covers off so I can swap out the camshafts because now I have the proper camshafts in my engine. Um, it means I don't need to do any extra wiring. Um, I just, once I drop this engine back in, I should be able to just put it all back together and start the car again and should be ready for that tune. Um, the two things, as I'm, I think I mentioned it before, two things that stopped me from the tune was Recam sensor's not working and I had an oil leak that was out of the rocker cover cover uh, seal rocker cover seal anyway, so um, Hopefully when I put this thing back in we're good to go um, So yeah, now I have the proper camshaft so Today in my engine is the VC0632 camshaft Which is the Brian Crow stage 3 EJ207 uh, single ABCS camshaft. Um, so I'm very happy that I've finally got my hands on some of these. It has been a while since um, I started recording this episode. So I think I said I started recording that one on the 5th of Jan. Um, currently we're in April, first or second week of April. So it's taken me that long to sell the other camshafts and finally get enough money to purchase some new camshafts plus I was doing some work on our other cars that needed some attention as well. Um, on a side note, I hope everybody here in New Zealand knows now that I just got a cert for our Audi um, that I put some coilovers on. $850 for a cert. Uh, I remember when it used to be $350, but uh, that was quite a long time ago. Anyway, so um, that's why it's taking me so long. I had to do a bit of work on the Audi to get it road legal again got that done also had to do some work on the Holden um, and now finally I can come back to this so now we're in the month of April and time is just flowing by and I feel sad for this car it's just been sitting here but but anyway moving forward I've got the proper camshafts in at the moment um, so hopefully that's that nightmare all done and dealt with um, and pretty much that's the end of this episode just a quick just wanted to let you guys know why I was unsuccessful on the dyno and what am I, what a, how I was going to fix these issues or what stopped me from getting the dyno. So like I said, one was an oil leak, not a big deal, it was the cover. Um, but the main one was I had the wrong camshafts, um, but now I've got the right ones. So um, in my next episode, I will talk about when you put um, new camshafts in, uh, there's a process that they call clearancing the valves or clearancing the buckets, clearancing the camshafts. Um, I'm going to talk about that in my next episode and then after that the other thing you need to do is dial the camshafts in. Um, now clearancing I had no idea about but I've managed to teach myself. Uh, but also dialing the camshafts, I have no idea about it, someone's going to give me a hand with that. Uh, so we're just waiting for him. I've already recorded the other episode um, about clearancing. Um, but yeah, as I was going through the footage, I thought I'd better come and clear things up. So that's that's where we're currently at. Um, it's April. The engine's over here and all the bits and pieces are on the table behind us. 
and that's what the current status of the car is everything's all over the place these are the new camshafts i'm not sure if we can see that and there's an inscription uh, bc0632 which is what should have happened when these when the other camshafts went into the engine but it was missed that's okay we are where we are um, i've got those in i'm waiting for someone to come and dial the camshafts in and then all this is ready to go back in um, so yeah that's it for this episode um, i do want to make a shout out to everyone that's still watching the video still following along i've had plenty of messages of people asking hey when's the next video um, apologies to everybody it's been so long hopefully i've got a bit of mojo back um, as you can imagine when when crap hits the roof um, you lose a bit of mojo but i've got some back now so hopefully i can keep these videos regular all the way to the finish um, please like share the video and if you've got any questions about what i've just spoken about in this episode just let me know um, or also any tips as well always open to that as well but until then um, i'll see you in the next episode which is coming out about the same time as this one so see you then ciao